Yo, what's going on, guys? It's Nick, talking up here in sports. We're coming back at you guys. It's been a hot minute since we've done this. I'm so excited to be back here. Um, man, I, I can't tell you how much I miss this and how much I, I, I just keep saying it, man. I miss it. I missed it, and it was, it was fantastic. Um, unfortunately, uh, we don't have Eric today, but um, Eric will be coming back here soon. Um, and uh, I would like to bring on another awesome dude that is probably going to be a pretty regular on the show now. Um, John, here he is. Big John. Hey, what's going on, Nick? <laughs> yes, sir. And let me tell you how excited I am for football season. I don't know about you. It could just be me, but the the air feels right. The barbecue tastes better. Sundays definitely have more meaning. And we are all happy again to see fans in the stadium and have football back. Life is just so much better. Can you agree with that? I 100% agree with that. I oh, cannot man. tell you how stoked I am for football this year. I'm, I'm ready for it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm so ready for it. Bro, and then um, having the fans back is this, it makes a big difference in my opinion. Oh, I think so too. It brings the uh, home field advantage back to having the home field advantage. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. So, um, you know, en enough of the, uh, you know, little quick banter. Let's, let's go ahead. Hey, Nick Lombardi coming out here saying it's back. What's going yeah. on, man? Hey. All right. So we're going to go ahead and just, you know, start in with it. Um, we're going to go ahead and do NFL week one predictions. Um, and the first one we got on deck is Dallas at Tampa. And the uh, odds are Tampa is minus eight with a 52 over and under. So Big John, my man. Tell me how you're feeling about this game, because I think we're on the same page. Well, I think uh, the whole nation should be on the same page with with this pick. I mean, you know, and I think I'm going to go with the Bucks, And only getting eight points, I think, is pretty generous, because I think that they win by more than a touchdown. I, I think they probably win by 14. But, you know, I guess they got to make it a game. They want folks to tune in to watch it, I guess. You know, it is the first game of the season. You know, and the reason why I put the over and the unders on here today was because I, I thought it was – some of them were being very, very generous. Um, and this is one of them. I, I really think that Tampa could put up 40 points against Dallas this week without bl batting an eye. I agree. I agree 100%, you know. And who knows how Dak's going to be coming off that injury. I mean, that's a pretty horrific injury to be trying to come back from. Yeah, I remember seeing it and being like, "Ooh, man, that looks like it hurts." You know, and if you think about it, every year the Cowboys come in so hyped, and I think a lot of it has to do with them just being the Cowboys in general. They always come in overhyped. You know, they have the weapons there, all right? Whoa, so, I mean, they're loaded on on paper. Yeah, they on paper, they they look great. A big part of why they did so bad last year was that Dak Prescott injury, in my opinion. I mean, Andy Dalton isn't stepping in to Dak Prescott's shoes and, uh, and doing what Dak Prescott does. That is true, but he's starting somewhere else, but that's a, for a different subject. Yep. But, um, and then, you know, them losing Zach Martin, that's that's one of the, that's the, Zeke Elliott even came out and said that he is the best player on that football team. Losing him, he's a top three offensive lineman, Pro Bowl player every year. You know, I mean, they, they need to yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, they punch it towards him so much that, I mean, and for years, Dallas has had an expensive offensive line. That's why these guys do so well at the back position. And, and Dak does so well because he has protection. Oh, yeah. Running behind that O-line definitely helps a lot. But we'll see how they go because now they got to protect Dak. You know, Dak just got paid $75 million. So, it's all on Dak's shoulders now. They got to protect him, and we'll see how he does coming off that uh, pretty terrible ankle injury. Um, so, just to guess, are you are you picking on fifty two over or fifty two under? You think there's going to be fifty two points scored over or under that? Under. Under. I yeah. was thinking over. I'm no. thinking. I'm think. I'm thinking. Da or Dallas is going to be able to put up enough points to push them over, but Tampa is going to do the, the heavy lifting. I think Dallas gets a lot of garbage point times. I think that's what <laughs> happened last year with Dak Prescott. He had a lot of late yardage, a lot of late game yardage when they're trying to come back from being down. That's where a lot of his stats came from, but I don't oh, know. We'll see. It's a good opening game, though, because, I mean, just because the Cowboys alone will bring a lot of eyes to it. So. Oh, yeah. 
It's America's team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I <laughs> just wanted to see what you would say about that. All right, next one on deck is Jacksonville at Houston. Tell me your thoughts here on this one. I'm actually very excited for this game, to be honest with you. I know that sounds kind of funny, but at, at the same time, Jacksonville, um, I'm excited to see Urban Meyer in the NFL. I guess we'll see how that – he's won everywhere else he's been, but we all know that doesn't translate to the NFL. This is going to be a whole different ball game. And then, of course, Trevor Lawrence, I mean – where he's he's only lost two games since four year in high school. I mean that's pretty legit, I guess. I don't know, it's average. And then uh, he's he's definitely going to be somebody to look out for. And then on the other side, the Texans. You know, I don't really want to touch on that. Nah, that's a whole different subject with you know what's going on over there, and Deshaun and all that. I don't even like like to speak yeah. on stuff like that. I don't even like to talk about that kind of stuff. I was about to say the best player on that team's on their third string. So, I mean, that just speaks volumes of what's going on over there in Houston. Um, then, Jackson, Jacksonville's still rebuilding. Um, absolutely. But, absolutely. But, but having uh, Lawrence and, and James Robinson um, in, in the backfield, um, I think, I think you, you, you're going to be looking at a pretty, pretty more like upside version of what they had last year. Um, my biggest concern with Lawrence is his pocket presence and how long he stays there and the mobility that he has because the NFL has changed to a point where you can't do Peyton Manning step up in the pocket and throw it like that every single play anymore. You can't do that. Right. It's so, going to be interesting. I'm curious to see how it's going to work too. Um, you got Houston as a minus three. How do you feel about that? Or Jacksonville is a minus three. Excuse um, me. I, I have that as as a pickup game. I really don't. Tyrod Taylor. He's which, going to throw a, throw a know, dart. Ty, Ty, Tyrod Taylor's starting. I guess he's, you know, he's been around the block, so he he won't be a deer in headlights at least. But I just I think that they're even more rebuilding than what Jacksonville is right now. Maybe Jacksonville might be a year ahead of them at at this time. You know, because I agree with that. I mean, so was, honestly, but, honestly, I could see Houston being like two years behind them at this exactly point. exactly so it's going to be it's interesting but you said that the jacksonville is favored by three uh yeah jacksonville is favored by three i take that i take that just I take exactly that. That. Yeah. i take that all day i'm saying hit the restart button in in houston and gut it from the top up absolutely <laughs> all right man we'll go ahead and move on to uh, Jackson, or uh, excuse me, uh, the Chargers versus the Washington football team. Um, oh, nice. The favorite here is the Chargers, but they have a minus one point differential favorite. Um, That's the it. Over -under, the over-under is 44 and a half. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, the Chargers, this is the Washington football team, my favorite name in all the sports. Um <laughs> You know, they got Fitz Magic playing for Washington now. Let's not forget about that. So you never know what he's going to bring. You know, they got Chase Young out there, who's I think going to be a defensive MVP player of the year, MVP player of the year caliber this year. After how he played last year, his rookie year, he could have been up there last year, obviously, but he's a rookie, so they would never do that. But um, And then uh, they have a top five defense in the league last year. So if they can continue on that with a little bit of Fitz Magic, they, they could win a couple games. I don't think they'll make the playoffs or anything like that. But if Fitz Magic doesn't turn the ball over, he will, he'll win them a couple games. They'll, still, they'll be in it every game because of their defense. You know what I mean? But on the flip side, the Chargers, now I like Justin Herbert. I think he was the best player in the 2020 draft class. You know what I mean? He came out, he was balling last year out of his mind. And uh, I, I think they'll go as far as he goes. But as far as who I got in this game, I'm actually going to go with uh, the Washington football team. I think this magic with that defense, I think that they're just a little bit better than the Chargers right now. I uh, I actually agree with you on this one. Um, the one-point differential tells me, you know, flip a coin, boys. Let's see what happens. Um, I've always been a fan of the journeyman Ryan Fitzmagic. I've always been a fan of Ryan Fitzmagic. How can't you be? Um, I there's games where he'll throw five touchdowns, 400 plus yards, and then he'll turn around the next week and throw five interceptions. You gotta love it. Is what it is. It is what it is. You know, <laughs> you know that you know that's true. You gotta you know love things, 
I love his magic. I love to watch him play. He's very fun I player. Love, to watch. I love his magic just as much as the next guy. But there's times where he he doesn't he he just is not having the day. No, yeah, and I no, feel like he, that's more often than other starters in the league, which is why he's the journeyman. He's exactly what he should be. Yeah, um, I I I like what Los Angeles has to offer this year. They've got people like Mike Williams and and Keenan Allen and and Jared Cook. The options are there, and he's got Austin Eckler in the background, where I think he's uh, in the backfield. The the guy has a ceiling that he hasn't even gotten close to yet. I know he can do better than what he's what he's produced. Um, always a good check down. I like seeing him in the backfield and coming out, and you know somebody's got to throw it to him just because there's no options out there. Eckler can catch. Um, I, the sky's the limit for the, uh, chargers this year. And, um, I, I think just because of, uh, young and how stout that defensive line is, so good. is Washington is going to take this one this week. So I agree with you on that. I like Justin Herbert though. I just want to put that out there. I do I like do. Justin Herbert a lot. I do want to say, I, I think the sky is the limit for, uh, Washington this year. Yeah. They they are on the up and up, really. I just think that they, but I hate, much as we all love Fitz Magic, he's not going to be. He's not. He's going to be eight and eight if he starts to I, be eight. And eight. I don't. If he finishes the season, I agree with you, but I don't think he's going to be the quarterback at the end of the season. No, we'll see. Yeah. So that is the Chargers and Washington football game or football team. Excuse me. Um, this is Seattle, <laughs> Seattle at uh, Indy. Oh, and, this, is, uh, this is the game I wanted to talk about, especially yeah. with you. Um, Seattle is the two and a half point favorite. Wow, that's actually a little closer than I would think. Yeah. Um, the over I under hear is, pick first on this one, actually, but before the, I go. Okay, the over and under is 49 and a half. So, as that tells me that people are are trying to sit here and tell me that Seattle is going to be doing bad this year. And, um, you know, I think they're going to, I think they'll make the playoffs at least. I mean, R- Russell Wilson, um, if they let him fire on all cylinders now that the offensive coordinator is gone and they brought in, uh, what's his name? Uh, heck no. Um, not heck. Damn. I'm spacing now. The, the new offensive coordinator. Doesn't right. I don't know his name either, but I know yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. one that there was a problem about, though, because Russell didn't have no say-so about who they picked, right? Uh, yeah. Heck, yeah, I, could, I couldn't remember. Um, But, yeah, they, they got rid of um, old boy last year and got in the new offensive coordinator, and um, uh, they brought in uh, Gerald Everett, who is a tight end that is, um, like, nobody's really, like, talking about. And I think he's going to have an amazing season this year. Now that they're going to be running two tight ends on each side, I mean, you don't really see that in Seattle that much. Um, and to be honest with you, <laughs> Carson Wentz isn't even going to make it through the first half. He's going to stub his finger or bat his eye too hard. Gonna, is he for sure playing week one? Is, then, that, is, that, is that official or what? I don't playing? even know if he's playing week one. I'm pretty sure he's on the COVID list right now. No, he uh, he hurt his foot. He had foot surgery. It was his foot. That was right. And even if he plays, dude, like, I've never been a Carson Wentz fan, man. I just don't believe in the guy. The Colts need to find another quarterback. That's that's just plain and simple. I think this is an easy W for Seattle. Um, the defense is going to be spotty. Um, but once the second half comes on, Russell turns it up, starts scoring more touchdowns. That's, that's an easy win. But their season is not going to be easy. Well, so you got the Seahawks, of course. But I got the Seahawks. Definitely only two and a half. That's easy. That's You should definitely. I'm taking two and a half Seahawks easy. Well, I'm going to, uh, you know, you talk about the uh, Carson Wentz. I think a lot of it is on him. As in The Colts defense, I think you're sleeping on the Colts defense a little bit, saying it's going to be an easy win. Uh, they just signed Leonard to the biggest contract for a linebacker in NFL history. He's one of the best linebackers in the game. Darius I Leonard, I believe his name is. I can't remember his first name. I know his last name is Leonard. And then um, they also uh, – but uh, if Carson Wentz isn't healthy, then it's, it's irrelevant. They'll definitely lose. I'm not sure who the backup is, but, I mean – 
I definitely don't think that they should ru uh, rush him back for week one. If he's not healthy, let him, you know, sit for two or three games, make sure he's fully healthy before you rush him back. You don't want that guy getting hurt again and being out for the – you just paid him all that money. He'll be out for the whole season. And, I mean, you know, uh, that's about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It, it all relies on Carson Wentz's shoulders, to be honest with you. <laughs> It's uh okay, so I looked at the depth chart here. It is um DeForest Buckner is on there too, still and solid, great defensive but, lineman, dog. Beast. Yeah, Darius Leonard is who you're speaking about. Okay, so then um, I didn't call him by his right name, it was Darius Leonard. But I, but I am looking at their, their defense right now, and it's up to date on uh the injury list. And as far as like throw a dart at one of the positions, somebody's injured somewhere. Yeah. So, um, and I know that one of their linemen too was hurt real bad as well for the Colts. I'll, I'll tell you right now, if Carson Wentz doesn't start, oh, it's going to be bad. Yeah, it's going to be bad. If Jacob Eason, I've seen enough of him in Washington to know that he's, yeah, I don't worry about that. He don't belong in this league. So, let, 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 let me speak to the Seahawks to you then, because you know, this is this is to you, this is close to you. Here's how I feel about the Seahawks going into this year. You know, I know you respect my opinion about it, and I'm unbiased about it because I'm not even a Seahawks fan. Yeah. Uh, I do think that they didn't really uh, – they, they played a better their, – their defense got much better second half of the season, and I do believe that was from adding uh, – my boy, uh, you don't know this, but Carlos Dunlap is from Somerville, South Carolina as well, where I'm from, you know, same part of town. So I think signing him and definitely having a healthy Jamal Adams is going to be big for y'all if he's healthy this year. That's a huge – he's been one of the best safeties in the league. And Russell's going to be Russell. I, I expect him to play very well. Um, you you need Carson to stay healthy because Russell always has been a better quarterback when he has a really good run game behind him. He's a very good play action quarterback coming off of rolling out things of that nature. But I mean, I think just because y'all have Russell alone, you're good for at least eight or nine games. Just him alone winning y'all that many games. But y'all's O line is the question. Don't forget about that. That was what oh, Russell sure. was. Russell was mad about that this offseason. He he wanted, you know, he was he was speaking about that. I believe is what he was talking about the O line. So, but I think I, I think. Y'all will be fine. Y'all win this game. Even if Wentz plays, I do. I have y'all still winning, so I would definitely take the Seahawks all day. But I'm curious to see what's going to happen with y'all this year. I don't. I, I think if you if Carson Wentz, not Wentz, uh, Carson, y'all's running back. That that's Carson, yeah. If if he runs the ball hard and stays stays good, I could definitely. I think y'all are still the best team in that division. But I do think the Rams with Stafford are going to be in trouble as well. I'll get but, more into. I, the, I, yeah, I would definitely I'll get more into this. my. Whole Seattle opinion at the end of all this, and and we'll talk about your thoughts on the Steelers and yeah. and so forth. But um, yeah, I like that. That's that's um, I, I got y'all definitely winning by at least three. So I would definitely, you, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. All right, let's move it along to the Jets versus the Panthers. Um, Carolina's got the five point favorite with a fifty four point over under. Wow. Yeah. Um, my thoughts here is, um, you know, the, the jets are the jets. They, they you know, and on the, other side the ball, you, yeah, on the other side of the ball, you're looking at, uh, run CM or run CMC. You know what I mean? Like Christian McCaffrey, if he's healthy, he's fighting for the number one rushing position. In, in for, the sure. League. for sure. For sure. hundred percent. Um, Derrick Henry, I think, edges him a little bit, in my opinion. I like Alvin Kamara. Huh? I like Alvin Kamara. Okay. I like Alvin Kamara, too. You can throw all three of those guys up, and, and you know, yeah. one of them is going to have a the monster the season. The got to stay healthy, though. That's right. Um, I think just having uh, McCaffrey alone in this game against the Jets is going to be the, the deciding factor here. Uh <laughs> Uh, this game, uh, this would probably be the least watched game on Sunday if I had to had to pick. I mean, I, I just I do think it's funny that Sam Darnold's the Panthers quarterback and he's playing the Jets his first game. Isn't that ironic to you too? Yeah, he's seen ghosts. You know, I do think that's <laughs> funny, and I think Sam Darnold could be decent. We'll see. You know, I mean, I feel like the Jets, man. I don't know who could go there and turn that franchise around. I don't care how good you are. You know, I mean, I don't know, man. The Jets. I just feel like the Jets and the Lions and those franchises. I don't know. You know, I mean, yeah, I guess we'll see what Zach Wilson does, you know. I you know, didn't see enough from him in preseason to warrant enough buzz to think that he's going to yeah. steal the show here. Yeah. I don't put a whole lot into preseason either, though. So, 
I don't know. I'm curious. I don't know. I just feel like I really don't know what to say. who <laughs> who cares about this game. I mean, I I agree with you. I'm, you know? And the only reason why I'm picking is is it, I, it's I, I on the schedule. It's, yeah, <laughs> I'm taking the Panthers too. Run CMC, and and that's the reason why. If McCaffrey can stay healthy, they got a decent enough defense. They got uh, that guy on the outside. I forget his name, but the young guy. That they could be good. I agree with that. I'll go back to an, another game that I feel like is is a who cares of who cares. Minnesota in Cincinnati. Minnesota of minus three is the favorite with a 48 over under. Um, Man, there's a lot of high over unders. Like, NFL is just a different league nowadays, you know? They expect a lot of high scoring games. Yeah. Um, I, I, so what I want, the only reason why I even remotely want to pay attention to this is to see how well uh, Burrow does Absolutely. On, on the second, second go around. Um, I think he's got um, enough weapons on offense. Um, they're not, you know, star studded. They're not phenomenal, best of the best cream of the crop. But they're good enough to get you a win yeah, against, a team, against a team like Minnesota where Kirk Cousins doesn't care about anybody but himself. Uh, uh, I guess the thing about the Vikings is, um, you know, Kirk Cousins, he's Mr. Checkdown, whatever. But uh, they, I think that they need to ride Dalvin Cook. I think he's one of the best running backs in the NFL. There's no, he's at least for sure top five. I mean that guy can you can throw it to him on the outside. You can he can run it up the middle. He can do. He's a, a pure stud, and and they ride him. They have a decent enough middle of the pack defense to where I do feel like that they could definitely win a couple games. Especially because the thing about him, he's so up and down. You know, I don't know. He wins some games, he loses some games, but hate to say it, you know, Kirk Cousins. I know you're listening because you know you are. Listen. When you have you, you always seem to choke in the big games, you know. And they give you all the Minnesota give you, you know, a lot of money out there. So you know, I don't know. Uh, I guess just uh, if I played fantasy, which I don't, I would definitely be getting Dalvin Cook because he's going to be getting a lot of heavy use out of over there in Minnesota because he's their main weapon. And they have that one white boy receiver, uh, Adam Thielen. He's good, yep. good receiver. He makes us look good, you know. So <laughs> I pull for him, you know. So. Uh, I I guess, but I like Joe Burrow a lot. I liked him coming out of LSU. He was, you know, he was so good at LSU. He had that one dominant year. Uh, I just, I don't know, you know, coming off that knee surgery, he even said himself he doesn't feel like the same player. He just tweeted that out or spoke somewhere. He said that a couple of days ago. I saw a quote by him. So I don't know. And that O-line, like, like I was talking to you earlier about it, you know, did, not much better than it was last year. So, I mean. Yeah. Maybe, maybe really this year he, he he won't be running to take as many risks as he did last year, but they got to keep him healthy. He is the franchise, you know what I mean? So yeah. I don't know, you know, certain places like they don't even have an indoor practicing facility. So I mean, like, what's going on over there? Like that guy had knee surgery; he can't have cold bones out there. It gets cold in Ohio. Like, what are they doing over there in Cincinnati? Like, get it together, man. Protect your, your franchise quarterback and let the boys practice inside. You know? Yep. Yep. I 100% agree with that. Um, honestly, I'm taking the under on this one. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of scoring in this one. Me neither. <laughs> Although I would like to see Joe light it up if I, if I, I don't say so myself. I know. I, I want to see him do well. I like Me the too. guy. I just want to see him be healthy and protected. Yeah. Boom. Arizona in Tennessee. Tennessee, the three-point favorites, 52 points is the over-under. Tell me your thoughts here. I, I actually – You know what I'm going to say. What? I'm, I mean, it's 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 Derrick Henry, man. It's, it's Derrick – Tannehill? Tan, yeah. Tannehill has been on fire. He's been playing the best football he's been playing since he's arrived in Tennessee. I mean – Derrick Henry is is King Henry for a reason. Um, Arizona is a good football team, and they're going to be one of the three teams in the NFC West to make the football or to make the playoffs this year. Um, I said that. I said that. They're no, I think, no, I like Arizona a lot. They're they're loaded. 
I think I think this is uh, Tennessee's game to lose, but they don't cough this one up. Let me ask you a question. So you like you 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 think Derrick Henry? You if you had to put him up as running back, where would you put him at on the list? Um, if not one, two. Um, I would. He's like number four, three down on my list. I would take Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara, and Dalvin Cook over him because of what they can do on the catching game, the screen game, the receiving game. What they add a different dimension to what he brings. Don't get me wrong; he is an animal, but they're not Alvin Kamara, bro. He's he led the Saints in catching and receiving and rushing yards last year. You, Derrick Henry's not doing stuff like that. You know what I mean? If no, you have the right. run game for them, then they're, they're, they don't really don't have a lot going on. But now they got – don't forget now, you didn't really speak on this. They just signed Julio Jones to open up the top off that defense. That you know? was that was something that I was going to mention. But, um, I do yeah, like that I mean, no, nah, you're right, man. Julio Jones just gives Ryan Tannehill, who is on the up and up, the the – See, I don't like – I'm, I'm not that high on Tannehill. I feel like he's up there with Kirk Cousins. Really? Yeah, wow. I think, he, I think I they're in the same category. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, I'm, Ryan. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. No, Tannehill. that's cool, dude. I, I respect that. I'm on the Tannehill train, dude. Like, I think he's he has turned it around since he's been in Tennessee, and it's – it's it's working for him. I like their coach. I like Mike Vrabel. He's a pretty t- he's a tough guy. I like him. He has them really playing Always hard. Been a fan you, know? Of Vrabel. you know he's a he, he has them boy playing hard. But uh, they also just uh, they also signed Bud Dupree from us. I don't know if you know who that is. He was a linebacker for us. Really really good. He tore his ACL last year, coming off ACL surgery. So we'll see how good he does for Tennessee. But if he could be anything like he played for us, I think he'll be a good asset to them. Now, let me speak about this other team because I knew I was going to spend a lot of time when we, we brought this game up because the Cardinals, man, I'm looking at my list here. Let me just list off some of the players that they have on that team, okay? Yeah. They're loaded. Tell me DeAndre Hopkins. Okay, DeAndre <laughs> Hopkins, Kyler Murray, Chandler Jones, the NFL sack leader two years ago, Buda Baker, the highest paid safety of all time from Washington, by the way. I don't know if you know he played for Washington. I don't know if you know that or not. Uh, they also just signed uh, T uh, JJ Watt. Maybe you heard of him. He had a couple good years out, out in Houston. He played. He had a couple decent years out there, I think. And then uh, even if he is half what he used to be, he's still better than some players in the in the league right now. Even if he's at half what he used to be. And this guy is kind of biased to my heart because uh, we went to the same exact high school. Uh, I actually, you know, I uh, I watched him play a many of Friday nights. AJ Green, uh, Somerville, South Carolina. Shout out, you know. That's where I'm from. AJ Green's also from there. Just wanted to put that out there so everybody knows. Uh, we went to the same high school, same year. But uh, if I do feel like him, I know he's not the same player he used to be. I know he's older. I understand that. But I think him being a number two behind Hopkins is perfect for AJ Green. I think that is ideal. He could be a great number two receiver. You know what I mean? And then I just feel like Kyler Murray has no excuse this year. He hit is loaded up. That team is loaded. I really think. Y'all's division, bro, is stacked. I'm saying there's three teams that are making it out of the NFC West in the playoffs this year. I mean, that is – that's how it was bold last year for us. We bold, had three bold teams. Prediction. Yeah, bold prediction, but I'm saying it. Um, and honestly, I don't even know who the third spot's going to be. It could be any one of the four teams, man. Three teams are going to win. Who's the fourth team in y'all's division? I don't think San Francisco gets. I don't think they're right. They're not a playoff see, team. See, I think that they could pull it off, man. I think they can. I don't it's know. San Francisco, I, I, it's the Rams, it's the Cardinals, and it's the Seattle Seahawks. I like the Rams a lot because I'm a Stafford guy. I don't know if you know or not, but uh, Stafford was, was AJ's quarterback when he was a freshman at Georgia. So okay. uh, I always – and he was – I think he, he – People sleep on Matthew Stafford. Let's put it like that. I think a lot of people, a lot of casual fans don't know how good Matthew Stafford really is. The moment I knew Matthew Stafford was the dude that needed to get out of Detroit and find his way to be the better quarterback that I know he is, was there was this game he was playing and they were like seconds away from uh, the game being over and they were like on the like two yard line, one yard line away from scoring a goal. Uh, or a touchdown, and uh, he had to jump over the line instead of, like, uh, spiking it to stop the clock. And nobody thought he was going to do that. And that's game management, bro. 
Like yeah. that guy knows what he's doing. He's he he's, knows. He's legit. It's gonna be it's gonna be y'all's division is gonna be tough this year to win. I think so too. I think you have to win at least 12 games, 12, 13 games to win y'all's division this year. I, I don't think the Seahawks are gonna do it. I think they're gonna hit the wild card. Um, if I'm being completely honest, um, I I think it's gonna be or uh, I almost said St. Louis. I think it's gonna be uh, Los Angeles for sure. Yeah, but, well, um, well, we'll speak on them here a little bit later. But yeah, no, I agree. But right. well, I'm, the Cardinals, though, bro. I'm telling you, I mean that team, that the players I just named, bro. That's almost that's like I mean Chandler Jones, Buddha Baker. I mean, it, TJ Watt, Chandler Jones on the same line. You know, you got AJ Green with DeAndre Hopkins, Kyler Murray. Is legit, man. Also, I don't forget you. top five MLB draft pick as well. Don't forget about yeah. that. Everybody's talking about oh Russell Wilson. That guy's not a no. He wasn't a real baseball player. Kyler Murray was for real. Yeah. Sorry, Russell. Sorry, I didn't mean. No, to. It's, it, I respect that. Um, man, Mister Unlimited. You know, you probably don't know. <laughs> I like that. All right. That's what Russell used to say. I don't know if you ever saw that little thing that he did. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> let's move on to San Francisco visiting Detroit. Um, and we were just we talking about that. <laughs> yeah, we do. I guess I guess San Francisco has a lot to talk about. I mean, who's going to be the quarterback there? You, Jimmy G or Trey Lance? Who's starting? I think that they're going to give Jimmy G a couple opportunities to prove why they gave him the big bucks. Like, you, you paid him. You you gotta at least get them out there and try. Um, they've they've got Debo Samuel. They got uh, you know, Debo Samuel uh, with this college South Carolina, by the way. <laughs> yeah, no, don't guys. If you guys didn't know, Big John over here went to South Carolina. <laughs> yeah, South Carolina. Sorry. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've always liked Kyle Shanahan's um uh, play calling. I think uh he's He's, That's actually on my notes right here. That you say that he's one of the best play callers in, in the NFL. He is very his his play calling IQ is is above and beyond a lot of these guys. But did you hear what they're saying about Trey Lance? That he's looking like Patty Mahomes two point I know you heard that, right? I did, but I you you pay Jimmy Garoppolo the big bucks, man. You yeah, but you don't trade up like that and pick somebody not to stop not, not to I'm, play. With. I'm I'm saying you go. Three weeks with him, and if you don't have a winning record by week three, he's out. You put Trey Lance. In. I like Jimmy yeah. G though. I like. I think I Jimmy G is solid. I do too. But just as we were talking about Joe Burrow with the uh, the knee injury, you know, sometimes guys just don't play the way that they used to after an injury like that. And yeah. I think that's what happened to Jimmy. Well, I'm curious to see them actually, and then. The Lions, I mean, I mean, do they not just scream like? I mean, they 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 get Jared Goff like that's going to be some kind of like. I mean, but I guess they had to get rid of. I guess there's nobody else, you know, that's better than whoever else they had there. That if because Stafford's time was up there, let's be honest, you know what I mean. But at this, I, I do like their new head coach. Hit free agency in a hot I mean, uh, I, uh, their new head coach Dan Campbell. He's quite the character. He was uh, talking about gnawing off kneecaps at his press conference when they get knocked down. He said they're going to get back up and gnaw off kneecaps. I, I didn't know what that was about, but we'll see how they do it. Yeah, like it. yeah. <laughs> you got to watch a video about that guy. That guy is pretty – he's quite the character. Okay. But uh, he's, like he might have him playing hard. We'll see. You know, we'll see. But, uh, yeah, as far as that goes, I'm just – the most important punchline of that game, I guess, is Jimmy G or Trey Lance. Who's going to be starting? Who's going to be, you know. See, I'm on the other side of this. I'm so much more saying that. Even if it is Jimmy G or even if it is Lance, Goff isn't going to be able to keep up with them. I don't think so either. I got. I got they don't, have a, they don't have a good ground game to to be able to stay competitive with the 49ers right now. I got don't. 49ers. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think 49ers. And I, I, I don't know how. I, I got them winning by maybe 10. I think seven and a half 10? is a little light. Okay. Yeah. I think a 45. And a half is a little high. Is yeah, I thought that was a little high also. Especially Donovan like to run the ball, you know, and uh, they have yeah. the, my favorite tight end 
and football plays for them as well. George Kittle, yeah. Right. I mean, he, yeah. the guy is – he's a beast. Yeah, a lot of people like he's to say uh, – what's the guy's name from Kansas City? A lot of people say Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey. But Travis Kelsey don't block like that. Yeah, so I think uh, – yeah, you're right. I think George Kittle is a more versatile um, – um, but a lot of people like to look at the scoring aspect versus yeah. the position of tight end. But George and Kittle's a baller too, though. George Kittle's a baller, man. Yeah, he is. And that's what I'm saying is I agree with you. I think he outshines him in the blocking by tremendously. And I think that George Kittle scores enough to keep up with Travis. Yeah. Travis Kelsey, Kelsey is, he's legit. I give it. He's, he's, he's the highest rated tight end in the NFL top 100 of all time. He's a top. Bet. Yeah, bet. Bet, bet. All right, man. Let's go ahead and move on to your team. Oh, God. This is so talk about. I hate to talk about it. I want to hear your opinion here. All right. I, well, uh, Seattle. I think that is that this is a tough game coming out the gate, by the way, for us. Very tough game. I don't know if you know or not, but the Bills aren't the old Bills anymore. The Bills are legit now. Uh. Uh, so let's get started with talk about the obvious Big Ben. Uh, this is his swan song, right? This is his last. This is his last go at it. I do think, you know, last year started off eleven and zero. Then we technically we crashed. It was a you know, it's, as Mike as Mike Tomlin would say, our, our our the fruit got ripe on the fast on on the tree too fast. We were at our best, not at the best time of the year. But uh, I really, as much as I hate to say it. It's tough for me to talk about it. I've been a Ben fan for a, a long time, but it, it's finally time to see him. The writing's definitely on the wall. I think I'm glad this is his last season. And I'm ready to get it over with. And uh, so, as saying that, I uh, and then I definitely uh, TJ Watt has not signed his new contract yet, so that is very scary for me. I think he's the best player on our team. Obviously, he's he could have been the defensive player of the year last year, but that's a different subject. They want they wanted to give it to the same old guy every time. I don't understand that, but that's not that's that's a different. Don't please don't get me started on that. Well, but, uh, he's, been, he's been practicing, but only doing so, solo drills, no team practicing. And Pittsburgh is known for not giving players big guaranteed money. We'll give you signing bonuses that are big, but we will not give you long term contracts with big money. But. I mean, he is the what makes our defense go. He's the reason why we had a top three defense, if not the best defense in the league last year. And everybody so. knows Pittsburgh is defense. That's what we do. That's what that's what we've always done, you know. And with Ben, I feel like you know, aging, giving up that money, and Najee Harris, who I'm super excited to see this year. I think everybody is the best running back coming out of the draft. He's on a rookie contract, so he's not making any money. So much as I hate to say it, but I think we need to go ahead and pay T.J. Watt. You know, I mean. You know, uh, he's ben, the, big Ben's out the door, man. We you know, all know this. Everybody knows this. Everybody knows and, that. And you know, that, and you know James Con Mike Tomlin has never been a, a a running back by committee type of a guy. He's always no, been no. this is our running back. That's and what I'm the saying. only reason why the second string guy is in right now is to give our one a yeah, break. Exactly. So I it. think Najee Harris is gonna be huge for us. I think if we can ride him and We've seen enough of James Conner. Oh, he he's, he plays for the Cardinals now anyway, so it doesn't oh, matter. That's right. Yeah, he's okay. Playing. I yeah. forgot. Yeah, you're right. I forgot yeah. about that. Now he's going to be full time. So uh it's going to be a, it's going to be an interesting season. Uh, I think our defense will be fine. We'll be, we got Joe Hayden out there still, you know. We got FitzPatrick one of the best in, in, in the league. He's he's up there with Jamal Adams, Mika FitzPatrick if not number 2. You know, and then we signed uh Mark Ingram uh from the for from the Chargers. I think that's a big pickup for us. He was, he was a pro bowl player. Couple years back, so I think him and TJ Watt on the line. Because I'm not with you, I'm not really worried about it yet. I'm pretty sure TJ Watt will get out. He's gonna play. Yeah, I, I really, I'm not worried about it yet. We'll see once the first game, first week comes up or something like that. Then I'll be really worried about it. But I think if we can ride Najee Harris, we got a couple young receivers that got to step up. But if we can do that, we got. Uh, uh, we, I think we'll be okay. But I actually have us losing this game to the Bills. I think the Bills. I think yeah. they're a better team right now. I think Josh Allen is the is the the new Big Ben, and not this Big Ben because this Big Ben ain't the old Big Ben. So if you, I'm not sure how I said that, but you see what I'm saying. I got Josh what you, Allen I got is what you're he's the old Big yeah. Ben. He's big. He's physical. He gets out the pocket. He can throw it a mile. Uh, he, Josh Allen is. If a lot of people 
Patrick Mahomes, yes, he's great. I take you know all those guys. But if right now, if I had to pick somebody, I would want Josh Allen as my quarterback of any quarterback in the NFL right now. I like his style of play. I like how big and physical he is. And then they got one of the best receivers. Uh, what's his name? Is John? Uh, what's the receiver's name for the Bills? The only one I'm thinking of right now, and I know is not correct, is uh, All Stars. Is it Diggs? Is not. Yes, it is Diggs. But I was thinking of uh, Beasley. And I know that's yeah, not what you were thinking of. Yeah, so those two, you know, and then I just really – they got a good defense. Everywhere. Huh? They've got weapons everywhere. Bro, they got – the Bills – that there's a reason why they, they made it to one game away from the Super Bowl last year, you know, so. Yeah, that's that's what I was about to say. And, and, and in my opinion, the Bills are one of the – if not – the best. Top five team they're in, in, they're in the top in right now. Yeah. And then a large part of that is because Josh Allen's present. The guy is phenomenal. He's a great new quarterback. He's, From year to year, he's gotten so much better. He's he's great. And I think he's only going to keep getting better. I mean, the gaggle of people that he's got around him that can catch the ball and create offense for him um not to mention that the buffalo defense is is legit don't it, I, think, I think it's in your rose place for them or did they have a quarterback who's legit too and a safety they've yeah they've got a great defense um this is this is my thought process on this it's going to be back and forth at the beginning they're going to get going and then once it comes to about mid game towards the second half Roethlisberger is going to start falling under pressure and, and Harris is going to start struggling to get things going on the, on the ground. Um, the guy needs to get his bearings. This is week one for him. This is, this is the big show. This is the first time. I don't think he's going to pop off with a hundred yards, you know, and then especially uh, yeah. the bills. We, um, uh, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but I do feel like, you know, the thing about us is if our defense is playing, we can be in any game. Our defense That's what I was about to get to. Yeah. Even though the Steelers, yeah, even though the Steelers' defense is is really really good, like it's it's the the Steelers' defense is always the iron curtain. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, you know, man, um, I think a forty nine over under is is. That's pretty. I think, I think it's gonna be over. To be honest with you, I think it's gonna be over also, and I think giving Buffalo a six and a half point spread. That's a lot. Is, I think so too. Buffalo is gonna be able to keep up, or yeah. uh, Pittsburgh is gonna be able to keep up, but Buffalo is gonna squeak it out. Yeah, I agree. I, agree. Right. I don't know though. You know, I'm so biased. And then you know, because we got a new off- offensive coordinator, so yeah. Matt Canada is gonna be in there running a lot of different play calls than what you've seen have been the last couple of years. So. And Najee Harris is one of those running backs who could catch the ball out of the backfield and stuff like that. So I'm it's, it's gonna I'm curious to see. Don't let listen, don't be fooled. Ben listen, Ben is I'm telling you, people say, Oh, Ben's this and that. If Ben having a good game, Ben could win any game, any given Sunday, bro. I'm telling you. I, I, yeah, it's he's not what he used to be, but he's not he's he's a veteran for a reason. He's a walking hall of famer for a reason. Oh, bet. I mean he He's in the Hall of Fame. In, we, got, in we got a whole new O line, so we're gonna find out, man. I I could go on and on about Pittsburgh all day, so but I just I'm so excited to see how the game goes. This, that but that's a tough matchup at first. I uh, think so too. Game. They've got plenty of room the rest of the season to you know go on, but Buffalo is a tough. Buffalo, matchup. Oh, one more thing before I reach the other. I talked to Mike Tomlin last night. I called Mike Tomlin, and he he told me he promised me. He said, John, I guarantee. Listen. You know what he said? He'll have the boys ready. So, listen, I have all faith in Mike Tomlin. I think he's one of the best coaches in, in the NFL for a reason. I think I I, I won't dispute that. I Who else would lose? Two years players. ago, he lost his starting quarterback, second game of the season, and still managed to win uh, nine games. Who else? Yep. That's that's tough to do. It is. I agree with that. Oh, God. Oh, here we go. Oh, <laughs> Barn burner of a game here. The battle of the birds, bro. The oh. Battle of the Birds. Um, Atlanta is sitting at the three and a half point favorite, and the over under is 48 and a half. Um, the only reason, and I'm telling you, this is the only reason 48. why I'm picking Atlanta is because Ryan 
um, is a more experienced quarterback, and I think that you don't he's think he's washed. No, not yet, man. I, I, I think this. I think he's not on Big Ben's level. Like, let's say Big Ben's here. Yeah, he's like right yeah, here, yeah. my dude. He'll still he'll still throw up three, four touchdowns yeah. with three, four hundred yards, easy. I think the biggest problem is is Atlanta's defense is is not sexy at all. No, uh, they kept a lot of yards last year. They've got Calvin Ridley. They've got um this new tight end Pitts. The highest tight end right? of all time. Yeah, I mean, man, I the the sky's the limit here for them, but it's not going to be a great season for them just because of the defense, and that's yeah. what I think. Yeah, but uh, the Eagles, though, uh, here's my pick. I'll talk about the Eagles real quick because you touched on the Falcons. And I pretty much agree with uh, with everything you said about the uh, the Falcons. But uh, how about Jalen Hurts? I think he's absolutely terrible. I, I, I don't have enough of an opinion on him. I, I just think he's, uh, I think I think he's, he's just, terrible. He he's, wasn't that good in college. He was. I mean, he won a lot of games because he played for us higher in college, but. He can't he's throw the ball. Be what, he's going to be what Tyrod Taylor is doing now in five years. Yeah. It doesn't Gardner – didn't they, did they just get Gardner Minshew? For the, I for think the, so, yeah. I think so. And their head coach, that new head coach is a weirdo too. If you ever hear him, you got to listen to some of these. He's, <laughs> I don't know. I really don't care anything about that game. And then, I mean, no more Julio for Atlanta. That's going to be weird to see, you know. I just feel like when you watch Atlanta, you just think about Julio Jones, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you know? but Cal, they got Calvin Ridley. You know, they got the new Kyle Pitts, whatever the guy's name is. He's he's from Florida, absolute stud. I watched him play in college. Many a year, he was a stud. He beat up on Tennessee, who's my college team. He beat up on us. To, <laughs> trust me, he's a stud. Okay, but uh, All right. let's see if he lives up to the hype. I believe he went top ten. That's that's high for a tight end. So we'll see. It's really high for a tight end. So, yeah. um, I think we're both in agreement. Who cares? <laughs> yeah, nobody cares. Two uh, brand new head coaches. We'll so we'll see. This oh, it's gonna be fun. I'm excited for this one. Oh gosh. Well, I I never. Uh, I'm personal bias in this one. I never. Matthew, St- me and uh, what's his name? I forget. What's the guy's? What's the quarterback's name for them? Uh yeah, I forgot. I forget his name sometimes. I me, mean, I've never liked. We we had a personal vendetta going back to the college days, so I never had I never have liked that guy. But go okay. ahead, I'm sorry, I should I shouldn't say that I shouldn't say that. I, Baker, you're amazing. I you're out with nothing but the best for you and your family. Go ahead, Nick. Um, uh, no, you're good. Um, my thoughts here are: if if you're tired of seeing Kansas City at the top of the league, <laughs> that sucks for you. Yeah, I agree. We're gonna be there for the next five years. They're here to stay. This is a franchise team that's going to be competing for Super Bowl contention almost every year unless something seriously drastic happens. Tyree Hill, Travis Kelsey, Patty Mahomes. I mean, dude, they've got – even the guys on their second string could be great starters other other places. Their Their defense is good. It's good. Tyron Badger, the Honey Badger, legit, bro. They're good, but they're the, the point of this team is, yeah. This the point of the team is the high octane scoring offense, and um, I just I like Cleveland. I think they they're going to make an uh, AFC playoff push this year. I think they'll be in the playoffs again this year. I think for sure. The, um, Baker Mayfield, you may not like him, but um, I think he's proven to be an above average. I wouldn't say he's superstar great, but he's above average. I agree. I agree. Much as I don't like him, I do think he's a. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't say he's an elite quarterback, but I would say he's right there below elite. Right. He's 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 above average. Yes, I, I agree. And that's what I'll throw when we have Baker Mayfield. He's above average. I yeah. I would like him if we were struggling for a quarterback. Well, let me ask you this. Okay, you put Russell Wilson on that team that he has around him. How many games they win? 12, 13 every year. I I think maybe even more than that. Really, That's what I'm I mean, just let um, me run this by you real quick for Baker Mayfield, okay? Because he gets a lot of credit. He gets okay. So this guy has uh, one of the best running backs in the league out of Georgia, 
a one-two punch yeah, too. Okay, a Kareem Hunt. Punch. Yeah, Great, I was about to start, say, Kareem Hunt can start anywhere else in the league. He start anywhere yeah. else. Uh, Nick Chubb, one of the best top three, top four or five running backs in the NFL, out of Georgia, by the way. Uh, one of the best O lines in the NFL as well for Baker Mayfield. Okay, uh, Jarvis Landry, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, that's two elite Pro Bowl receivers. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, Miles Garrett and Davion Clowney on their defensive line. I mean, and Denzel Ward playing cornerback. Let's be honest. Uh, they go as far as Baker takes them. If Baker plays well, they play well. But yep. Baker is not a drop back and throw the ball 40 times a game. He's a – you give – if Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt get that run game going, that is one of the hardest teams in the league to stop because that, that will open up the play action, and that's where Baker could get going. He's not going to drop back and go through reads and give you that kind of uh, productivity. But if Nick Chubb and him – if you can't stop that run game, they're going to tear you apart. Uh, Nick Chubb is a great player. Uh, I really do think that they're going to be really good this year. But with all that being said – uh, the Browns is the Browns, you know that. You know that's what you know. Me being a Steelers fan, uh, I got KC beating them by uh, at least ten points. Yeah, I think the uh, six six point favorites for Kansas City is um, Cleveland's good. I'm generous. telling you, if, it's being generous for Cleveland. Did, didn't they beat up on them pretty good in the AFC Championship game or no? I mean, or in the one right? They I think they played in the second round or something yeah. of that nature. Yeah. Um, this is what I was going to say about this game is, is I like Kansas City's offense to score 53 points. Yeah, on the yeah, over I under. agree. I agree. I, I mean, they can score 53 points without Cleveland scoring yeah. a field goal. Exactly. I agree. That, that's just my point. But Cleveland's um, defense is good, bro. I'm telling you. They got Miles Gates going to be a, a defensive player of the year candidate. Yeah. Jadavion Clowney. I mean, that's that's. That's what I was gonna say. Is They're loaded, man. They're loaded. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not hating on Cleveland at all in this conversation that we're having. But KC is is KC a franchise is KC. team. Yeah. Kansas City and and Patty Mahomes. I'm I'm ever gonna have etched in my brain after that last Super Bowl where my man is diving and still throwing the ball. I mean, the guy makes plays even if wide receiver doesn't catch it. It's Patty Mahomes, man. Like, they got to get that old line tuned up because Miles yeah. Garrett and David Cloud, he's coming. So we're going to see. Yeah. That's, yeah, a, we'll that's see. a good matchup, though. I like to watch. I'm so aggravated, bro. I got to work for the first game on Sunday. I'm that's so, yeah. so aggravated about it, bro. Because I can't even watch. I'm so, I'm livid about thinking about it right now. <laughs> well, let's get you off of that and go ahead and bring us up to uh, New Orleans versus Green Bay. This is a good um, matchup right here. I like this game. I'm actually pretty interested in this. And I think a four point favorite for green Bay is um, it's, it's fair. I think this is a, a really good close game. Um, I'm very, very curious as to see how Jameis Winston. That's what it's all about, right? It's all about, it is, it is, you know, Drew Brees leaving is, is detrimental to this team. Oh, Hall of Fame quarterback. That's a Hall of Fame but, yeah, quarterback. But potentially, if Jameis Winston takes this time where he wasn't playing and soaks up everything that he can in the backup, I mean, dude, Teddy Bridgewater was there and went 5-0. and oh. yeah. Jameis Winston throws 40 touchdowns and 40 interceptions. You <laughs> cut that interceptions down to 20, and I think he threw 5,000 yards that season, didn't he? It was close to. He did. He did. He did. He threw for more than that, I think. I think he broke so He went. He, it was like a top five all time. <laughs> it was like 5,200, I think, wasn't yeah. it? But he also threw for 30 interceptions that same year. That's what I was saying. I think he went 40 for 40. Uh, I think he went 40 that, touchdowns. No, that's just a documentary show. But that's what I'm saying is yeah. is – Jameis Winston, if if he can turn the the turnovers around and cut that in half, to, I'm and Taysom Hill is legit. Hey, that's the next Joe He's Montana. Is what Sean Payton said. My, my man is a flex player. There's never been a flex player in football. Yeah, he, like but let's be real though. He's not a quarterback. <laughs> I think you can throw him in on a play. And, said, and do some wild said, His tweet said if he's not going to be a quarterback for the Saints, he needs to be moved on to go somewhere else. You, yeah, you think so? He's not going to – I don't know. That guy, he thinks he's a starting quarterback. He needs to get a reality check. 
I think he's good playing whatever position. Me too. I think he's good at what he does. Yeah. He's he's good. He can throw the ball, but he's not bringing a championship to a team no. at a quarterback position. No, but great everywhere. Yeah, great he's dangerous. If you, put, if you put him in the playbook, it's nice to have those plays where he can run it, he can pass it. You don't know what he's going to do. He could catch it. He could go take off. He could do anything, you know? Yeah. Give me your thoughts about um, Green Bay right now. I mean, we've we've been totally – you know, praising uh, the Saints right now, but what are your uh, thoughts? About- well, uh, as much as I'm praising the Saints, I have them losing this game. Okay. Uh, I think Aaron Rodgers, uh, Devontae Adams, what's their running back's name? Aaron Jones? Is Aaron Jones? Jamal Williams? Oh, they, no, he's gone. He yeah, left. Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones. Yeah. yeah. I just think when, when they're playing on point, and the, this game's not even in New Orleans, so they're not going to have – I don't know if you know that or not, but it's being played in Jacksonville because of Hurricane Edna. Yep. So it's going to be in Green Bay, and Green Bay fans travel very well. And I just – I just Aaron Rodgers, man, that guy, that's a bad boy right there. You know I mean? That's okay. – he just – and then uh, – so I just – I think they're just a better team right now. But uh, I want to speak on something with New Orleans one time. They have uh, – they have who I think is the best running back in the NFL, Alvin Kamara, on their team, Alvin Kamara. And uh, just in case nobody knew, he did he did go to Tennessee, in case, in case y'all forgot what college he played for. Uh, I love talking about that. <laughs> but uh, I think you ride him. That guy's a workhorse. He does – I mean, he, he led them in receiving yards, rushing yards, and catches last year at running back position. And that's – if that don't tell you what you need to hear, then that's all you need to know right there. That guy's slippery as it. I mean, he is. He's probably gonna be almost everybody's number one fantasy pick this year. Uh, you can right? Am, 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 I, am I wrong about that? He, he'll he People like to say Christian McCaffrey, but Christian McCaffrey can't stay healthy. So, I've I of the multiple looks at people's like draft order, it was Derrick Henry, then Dalvin. And yeah, he gives me touchdowns. I mean, he doesn't fill the stat sheet like Alvin, Alvin Kamara does. I, I I see where you're coming from on there. Um, you know somebody that we didn't mention that I think is going to have um, – And Michael Thomas, don't forget, he's not playing. He's out. So that's I was, a – I was, was, was going to say Marquez really. Callaway. I was going to say Marquez Callaway is going to um, – is, is going to have a good – I liked what he did during the preseason. Uh, I, he we'll see. He's gonna, I think he's their number one option now, right? So, Yeah, he's the number one slot right now. Just Thomas think, McCarr, um, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think Callaway is going to have, have a good season. I've always, had a, I've always liked Jameis, too. I think he's funny. He's a, good, <laughs> he's a funny character ever since back in the day when he had the crab legs. I've always, no <laughs> crab legs I've always, I've always liked Jameis, you know? A lot of people like to I give mean, him a hard time about that, but you know – he went in that store, and whoever worked there was like, "Oh, James Winston, man, go dog, just take those crab legs, bro." You know damn well that's what happened. Probably. <laughs> you know how those college, you know how the college players boosters. Yeah. <laughs> go down to my store and get all the crab legs you want. Just keep throwing touchdowns for Florida State, boy. You know. Right. <laughs> you know that's how that that's works. But you know, I, I with all that being said, I like Jameis. I hope he does well. But I, I just don't know if they're ready week one to beat the Green Bay Packers right now. Packers are all around good team, good defense, good offense, led by, let's be honest, probably the, the best quarterback in the NFL right now. I don't, I don't mean long term. Of course, you got Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, all them. But right now, if I had to win one game, I have to go with Aaron Rodgers. I'm see, and this is I, I normally. Normally, I would agree with you, but this is my hot take here this season. Is I don't think Aaron Rodgers is completely invested in this. You think? Well, people are saying uh, that he's going to be out of there next year. That's what I'm saying. Is I'm I'm thinking he might not be entirely invested in. See, I don't know. I feel like players of that caliber, of that level, they they have no choice but to play. They they can't go out there and half ass. They got to go out there and play as hard as they can. That's just all they know. He don't forget he's a reigning reigning MVP. I know this. I know this. But my thought process is is just and and like I said, it's a hot take. It's it's a hot take. <clears throat> the way he like publicly was like talking about the Packers organization, and the way 
that the things went down in the off season as they did, I wouldn't be surprised if he's not like completely 100% into it. I understand he was he was not happy. But I mean, yeah. Russell's not happy. He wasn't happy coming into this off season, you know? Do you think he's not all the way into it? Yeah, but Russell, but I I have seen where Aaron Rodgers is like eh. Russell Wilson always comes out there and is like one and oh. Like it's always one yeah, and but that's because he's a like, robot no, with a, he's a robot matter. with a microchip built into his head that he has no <laughs> yeah, personality. You, you know what I mean? You're right, but he always comes out there and he's like, Hey, I don't care what happened last week. This is this week and, and we're fighting this week. Yeah, but I would almost rather see my quarterback be more I don't know, more real, if that makes sense. I'm not saying that Russell's not real, but like he he definitely has bought into the oh, Peyton Manning type image, you know what I mean? I feel you. I got yeah. you. To where you know, <laughs> my, I'm taking. I, I am. I'm going to take. So you, well, well, if you if you had, so you would pick Patrick Mahomes over Aaron Rodgers. If you had to pick one game right now, one quarterback tomorrow. You you're, you're taking Patrick Mahomes. Yes. And but then Aaron Rodgers number two or Tom. I'd pick Tom and then Aaron. Yeah. Okay. I th- don't get me wrong. Tom is too, but Aaron, man, but that something. And don't get me wrong. He took Big Ben's third Super Bowl array back in 2010. So. Trust me, I do not like that guy for what he did. I, ever since then, I have you wished him nothing. I, but I, I is, don't. Me personally, I don't like Tom Brady. Me personally, I don't like Aaron Rodgers. Right. But I don't. I don't sit here and be like they suck. I don't like and them. That's, that's, all, yeah. you that's how I feel that. about Baker. Because I don't like Baker. You know, themselves. They've exactly. proven themselves. They they're great players. They 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 are both elite quarterbacks in this league. And will be until they're done. I really do feel like feel like he is going to be uh, Patrick Mahomes is going to be around for the next ten years, fifteen years. I think he'll be very uh, Tom Brady esque. You, th- I don't see him getting six though. I don't see him getting six, but I, I, I would shoot for maybe three or four. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. He should have had the two, but you know, oh well, Tom Brady. Can't That's believe Tom Brady. Brady's still going. That's but yeah, so I guess if Green Bay minus four, I I I think I take uh I take New I guess four points. That's not a that's only a I'm taking point. New Orleans uh, on this one. Yeah, me too. I agree. That's right. a good, that, that's a good fun game to watch though. Yeah, uh, very, very now change the change of speed. I don't even, we go from the Packers and the Saints. Who is this? Denver has a football team. Oh yeah, the Broncos. Denver and the, and the Giants, my man. Oh man, can't wait Denver, to watch this one on Sunday. I know everybody's really excited. Yeah, it's a big matchup right here. Uh, um, I I think people are going to sleep on the Broncos a little bit this year. They ain't making a playoff push, but I think they're going to be better than what people think. Uh, well, Von Miller's back this year. That's going to make them automatically a little bit better. But I'm not sure how much he has left. We'll see after sitting out last year. I like that they brought Teddy Bridgewater. You like that? You, you I like do. Teddy? I do. I, I, before, when he was playing in, like, Minnesota, I was like, pff, pff. but after last season and watching him operate the way that he did and going 5-0 and oh in New Orleans, I yeah, was but, no, but don't but don't, don't forget he played for the Panthers last year, started the whole year. He did terrible. I don't know. I mean, I mean, he's better than anybody else they got. He, but no, Drew Locke. That, was, that wasn't last year. Locke? Last season, he was with the Saints. No, that, that was the year before year. last. That was the year no. before last. Incorrect, my man. Let me – hold on. Uh, you go, here we go. Uh, we're doing it. We're doing it. That's incorrect, my man. All right, hold up. Jameis was the backup for them for the Saints last year. Hey, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. I'll One thing I know, that. okay. I'll Don't give you that. You're right. sports knowledge, okay? I'll give you that. I'll give you that. All right, but um, I'm, but he's uh, but Drew Lock. I guess that I guess they think that Drew Lock's not not going to be the answer, huh? I don't think so. What do you think about it? Uh, I don't care. Uh, I won't watch much of their games, and uh. As long as Kansas City is in that division, the Broncos won't win another ch- division championship the next 10 years. So I don't. Right, oh, the Giants. Oh, hold on. We forgot about the Giants. 
Yeah. Uh, the only thing I can say about the Giants is that uh, they got Danny Dimes, Daniel Jones. I'm not very high on him. I think he's also another average quarterback. But uh, I am excited to see Saquon Barkley being back. But from what I hear, they're rushing him back. So uh, I don't know why they would do that. They're not going to be very good anyway, so why not let him fully heal before he comes back? But I get, I get, I get it. He puts the, the asses in seats. He brings, He's their best player. So uh, I'm excited to see Saquon Barkley and how he comes back this year. I like the idea of Jerry Judy. I like the idea of Cortland Sutton. Yeah. And I like the idea of Noah Fant. I should have, should have done a little more research on that team, but uh, I'm, I won't. So don't hold me, hold me to that. I'm I'm putting Teddy Bridgewater in there and thinking he's got to do better than what Drew Locke did last year. People were high on Drew Locke. I never was, but some people were. I wasn't either. Um, but I'm my my fingers are crossed for Barkley to stay healthy. I don't have him on my fantasy team, but I've always been. A big Barkley fan. Is he healthy? He is legit. Yeah, he's great. And um, Evan Ingram needs to step up this. Even season. though he went to a weird college, we're not going to speak about that. Penn State. We're not going to talk. <laughs> that's that's a different. Let's I, not be, I, I need digress. Evan Ingram to step it up this season again. I don't have him this year, but I, I, I like to look at the Giants and look at. Like Eli Manning getting benched and losing his Iron Man, like how BS was that? I couldn't I, believe that. And I know, and I and ever since that's happened, I've thought, man, I I just want to see the Giants bounce back and have a good season. Football's better where the Giants are good. Where's a good New York team? In, in, not even in football, Nick. In all sports, where the Knicks are doing good, where the Yankees are doing good, and where the Giants are doing good. That is good for NFL sports. I don't know. I'm not. I'm sorry for all sports, and I don't know why that is, but that's just how it is. I, I agree with that because um, honestly, when when those teams are doing good, y- you like to root against them. Right. And that's just that's just me. But I don't want to sit here and be like, oh, it's just the Jets. <laughs> are they going to win one this year? Oh, it's just the Giants. Are they going to win five this year? I don't know. Oh. I don't yeah. like that. You know the, the the Giants and the the honestly, I mean the 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 Jets. I'm sitting here thinking about it. the last time they were good was was what when Sanchez played for them before the butt fumble a couple years before that they were good. They won a couple AFC champ. They won a couple. They made. I'm sorry. They made it to a couple AFC championship games and lost to Pittsburgh. And then they also lost to the Patriots. I think one or two times. Yeah, I don't think they've been like really relevant since Mark Shan- Sanchez. Well, had his, his decent years. He was never great, but he had a couple of decent years. When it went up, my yeah. boy Rex Ryan was the coach. I love that guy. That yeah. guy's funny. I love he's, Rex Ryan. He's a he's a good he he could be a D coordinator right now somewhere. I believe. Oh, bet. Yeah. All right, let's move it along. We've we've hit past the hour mark. So, like I said, I don't have anything to do tonight. I'm down, well. We gotta finish the rest of the games at least. That's it. Yeah, for sure. We've Can got we um, real quick. We got to the two, we've got three games and two of our outside of football topics or outside of or three of our outside of pick topics and yeah. I'd like to hit them. So hey, can you give me a two minute break while I run to the restroom really fast? Yeah, yeah. I'll go ahead and just talk about Miami real quick. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh man. Two here's my thoughts on Miami. Uh Tua Tagalova is is he's he's not gonna do good and that's all I got to say about that. And uh, hold on, but don't go. I want to talk about Mac Jones. So don't, don't, don't. Okay. Um, I'm just to keep talking while he's gone. Um, I'd like to say that I think that the Dolphins are going to do a little bit better this season than than um, as a previous. But um, it's going to largely depend on how Tua performs. I think um, his ability to actually get the ball out there and 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 score. Um, I think it's going to be a huge, huge deal for the Miami Dolphins to make a splash the way that they want to this season. Um, and and two is, two is the primary factor in that. Um, New England just cut Cam Newton. And uh, shoot, man, Mac Jones, everybody's on the Mac Jones train. Um, everything we've seen has been promising. Um, He's setting off fireworks all preseason, preseason long, and uh, he did so well that they cut Cam Newton. 
Um, now, if he can deliver in a game where it actually means something, where it actually um, really counts, we'll see in, in week one and week two. Um, and, and this is a, a, an important game for both of these teams. Miami and um, Miami and uh, New England are both in the same division. It is a divisional matchup. Week one, it is important. And I think Bill Belichick um, knows that, that it is that important. And he's going to end up pulling this victory out behind Mac Jones. All right. So what we're, we're talking about here, um, <coughs> Miami, I guess, is best in all into Tua, but I don't know if you've been hearing the rumors or not, but they are still highly interested in Deshaun Watson. I'm not sure if you have heard those rumors, but what an awkward place for Tua to be in, sitting in the locker room hearing all the rumors that your team is still trying to go after Deshaun Watson because, you know, they really – I mean, I hate to say it, but people just don't have much faith in Tua. You know, Ryan Fitzmagic had to save him a lot in a couple fourth quarter situations last year where they actually pulled him, and Ryan came in and won the game for him with that Fitzmagic like he always does. But uh, let's talk about the real team here, Uh, the Patriots. (coughs) Uh, I think they're going to be a hell of a lot better than they were last year. Let's get that out the way right now. Uh, I think – uh, Mac Jones fell right into their lap. I mean, this guy just won a national championship. People were saying that he was arguably better than Zach Wilson and Trey Lance, that people were going to cut it, and he fell to number 15 right into the Patriot, 13 or 15. And, I mean, that's the last thing you want to do is give Bill Belichick, a guy who's a smart, young, talented quarterback out here. And, I mean, like you said, I don't, buy much, in it, their shoulder. I don't buy much in the preseason, but this guy, from what I'm hearing and practices, even the whole team, they, they from what I'm hearing, he is, uh, he was, he's, he's legit. So, uh, and don't forget the Patriots spent $150 million in uh, signing people this off season. Cause they didn't have nobody. They signed, they signed a lot of people. They spent a lot of money this year. And I think you give Mac Jones, somebody, uh, you give Mac Jones, we're sorry, trying to find something I wrote down here. Can't find my notes. I'm hoping that uh, Aguilar turns it around here with the opportunity given to have a quarterback like Mac Jones. Uh, you give Mac Jones – oh, you give Mac Jones – I'm sorry. You give Mac Jones all that talent around him. So you give him Bill Belichick. You give Bill Belichick a quarterback he can groom and turn into – that's – this, we're talking about Bill Belichick here. This guy wins football games. They spent all that money to get playmakers. They're going to have a new quarterback. I think uh, it's going to be them or the Bills to win that division. But I really think the, the Patriots are going to be on the right track this year. He, what better place to go to for a rookie quarterback and to, and to step your feet into an organization than that one? you got Josh McDaniels, one of the best offensive coordinators, as your offensive coordinator. They, they, they don't let you get hit. They run a system where – I mean, I'm just – I really think that Mac Jones is going to be good for them. And uh, how do you feel about them letting Cam go? I mean, that's it. I think that says a lot to me, that how much faith they have in Mac Jones. How do you feel about that? That's what I said. Um, that's exactly what I said. I thought, um, you know, Mac Jones know, – Between me and you, I think Cam is is, is the best he could be now. Is, even before he they cut him, I felt like he was going to be a second-string quarterback the next, his, his later on. But, but Cam – it's such a big personality. Can't he be a second string quarterback? No. No. And he won't be. And he won't be. I think if somebody doesn't sign him this season to fill some first string quarterback position, I think last season was his last season. You th- uh, I think he comes in this season after if somebody gets hurt and he needs to uh, step in. And play somebody like a quarterback goes down halfway through the season, especially with 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 there being uh what you call it nowadays too with COVID and everything like that. He could definitely step in later on in the in the season. I feel like if the, if a Stay healthy team Stay training exactly. You got New England minus three. Uh yeah, I, I got them beating them by more than that. I got New England beating them by ten points plus. Yeah, me too. All right, man. Sorry, I'm kind of over the place with my notes on that last session. I apologize about that. No, you're cool, dude. It's all good. Um, The next one is Chicago versus the Rams. And um, this is where I would like to turn it over to you 
because this is one of those ones I was like, uh, I don't know about. So I want to hear your thoughts on it. I'm actually pretty excited for this game uh, <coughs> because, well, let's talk about the uh, talk about the Bears first. Apparently, Andy Dalton is going to be starting. They're not going to let Trey, uh, not Trey Lance, I apologize, That's Justin good. Fields. They're not going to let Justin Fields start. They're going to let him sit behind Dalton and let him get a – I don't understand it. I don't understand why you draft that high up to get Justin Fields if you're going to start Andy Dalton. But, I, hey, sometimes sitting behind a quarterback works out. Like, look at uh, Aaron Rodgers sat behind uh, Brett Favre. Uh, who else? Uh, Patrick Mahomes sat behind Alex Smith. Sometimes it works. But I think the Bears are one of those organizations where – they got to win now. The Bears fans do not mess around. And uh, Justin Fields is what they're saying he is. Why not get him out there? Why not let him uh, get those bumps and bruises and get him out there and play the game? But uh, I guess they want Andy Dalton to start. That's who they want to start. But uh, the Rams on the other side, uh, and they got Khalil Mack on on defense on for the Bears. The Bears got a great defense. They'll, they'll be fine as far as that side of the ball goes. It's really all about Justin Fields. Or If it was me, I'm starting Justin Fields, but. As far as the Rams goes, I know you picked me to talk about them because you're biased against them. I know you can't, you don't like the Rams because I know they're y'all's rival. But uh, I do think y'all are. I think people are going to be really. I think uh, Matthew Stafford is the guy. I really high on Matthew Stafford. A lot of casual fans probably won't understand because he oh he never won anything. Well, he was in Detroit. What quarterbacks ever won in, in Detroit? Uh, I'll wait. Okay. Uh, I'm telling you, this guy is legit. He plays hard. He doesn't, doesn't complain. You never heard him complain over all the years he's been in Detroit. Trust me, he could have complained a lot of years. Uh, I think him and Sean McVay, Sean McVay has this guy now to play his offense around, and I'm telling you, it's going to be good for Stafford and Sean McVay. They're going to balance very well with each other. And don't forget, the Rams already have a great defense. They got Jalen Ramsey and Aaron Donald. That's two of the top five defensive players in the whole NFL on one team. So, I do think the Rams are going to be a very stout team this year. I think Stafford makes them a much better team than they were last year. And uh, I got the Rams beating the Bears no matter who's playing quarterback for the Bears on Sunday. I agree with that. I agree with that. I want to hear your opinion on the Rams. How do you feel about them getting Stafford in y'all's division? I, I I agree with what you've got, got to say about Stafford. I've always loved Matthew Stafford. I think he is a very underrated quarterback. I think – as we talked about earlier, I knew the exact moment where I was like, this is the guy that, like, he he's a really good quarterback, just in a crap position. Um, I mean, he, they had Megatron and, and Matthew Stafford, and there just – there wasn't anything else outside of that. I think they went 0-16 when they had those two, I think. I don't know for sure. I could be wrong. Oh so damning that's what that, that's what it is man I feel like Matthew Stafford could have flourished somewhere else and I'm glad he's getting the opportunity and not having to retire as a Detroit Lion um and as you said Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey dude uh, that's all you need right there that's that's defense man that is uh, that is phenomenal even though I feel Aaron like Donald, Aaron Donald, Aaron Donald is the player of the so year good. Aaron Donald is so good. You put him anywhere on a defensive line, and he makes other people better. I agree. I just feel like they they gave it to him, defensive player of the year over TJ Watt. I don't agree with that, but that's a, we'll talk about that on another day. All right, I, I I'm on board with you there. Um, and but Aaron he, Donald's kind of player. He's he's he's, he's, a, he's Aaron Donald's like a LeBron. You could give him the MVP every year. He's that good. Yeah. Um. I'll, I'll say this about Chicago, and I'll be nice, sweet, and brief. Um, Justin um, uh, Fields. Yeah, sorry. Justin Fields is, is the future of their of their franchise. Um, I've said this multiple times on this show specifically. You sit the young quarterback so that he can learn stuff and get better. But Andy Dalton ain't the guy. Andy Dalton ain't the guy, man. The Red Rifle? TCU Spiders? No, nah, man. The No, dude. My my man out here rocking number 14. I used to make fun of guys who I was in the military with who were Cincinnati fans, and I'd say, hey, man. He was good for Cincinnati? Yeah, right? I, no, they, there's actual people out there that root for Cincinnati, believe it or not. Wow, shocked. I used to I used to joke with them and say, you know why Andy Dalton wears the number fourteen? 
because if you score 14 points on him in the playoffs, you win. Oh, yeah. He ain't coming back from that. You win. We knocked this, him out of the playoffs so many years in a row. It wasn't even funny no more. He, it, he can't – He. I didn't really like what I saw from him in Dallas. It was, it, it was okay. It was just not jaw dropping. And and Justin Fields is is a superstar in the making. Give him the experience. We'll see. We'll see. That's what I think. Um, I take Los Angeles all day. Oh yeah, no matter who's playing. Three and a half is is being generous to the Bears. That's what I, I think. think. Uh, what's, well, that, what's that receiver's name for the Rams? The white boy who's pretty good? Cooper Cup. Yeah, he's solid. Yeah, I love Cooper Cup. He's solid. All right, let's move it on to Baltimore and the black and silver who just recently signed KJ Wright. <laughs> really? Yeah, they got KJ Wright. I think they signed him today or late last night. But well, yeah, they got they got big old KJ right. Well, that's He's funny because as I was uh, getting my notes together here to come on the show, the Ravens just signed Le'Veon Bell. As we're sitting here talking, when they signed Le'Veon Bell as well, yeah, you know. So I don't know if that's going to be because you know they lost their quarterback. In pre- I mean, I'm sorry, their running back in preseason. Well, for that team, the quarterback is kind of the running back, but that's a different story. But uh, <laughs> uh, the Raiders. Let's talk about the Raiders first. Uh, Let's talk about the most uh, the star player, the most famous person on the Raiders team, uh, John Gruden. Uh, I, I feel like uh, ten years, a hundred million dollars, and he has uh, what is it, three or four years? Into, is it three or four years into that contract now, or no? I don't know. However many years is uh, yet to make the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, how much longer of a lease do you think he has? Do you think he'll work the whole ten years out if they don't make the playoffs? I said this when they signed him. And I could run it back and try and find it for you. But I said they needed at least four to five years because he gutted this thing. He from, did. He gutted it. I mean, you get he let go of Khalil Mack. Mack. Yeah. You Dick get rid of Khalil Mack, you got to turn some stuff around. Yeah. yeah that's a, <laughs> I, I, I don't know if it's true or not, but I, I read online that they were asking to try and get Khalil I Mack. heard that too. Is that true? That's embarrassing. I don't know. I heard that is it. embarrassing. I heard it. I don't know if it's true or not, and that's wild. But this is what I'm saying is is I thought John Gruden was um was was gonna have to gut this team and and really start over. And and I thought that he had a really long leash. I think right. that they've improved as the years have gone along since he's been there, but I don't know how much longer he's got. Do you think he can he'll work? I don't think I don't see him doing the whole this, ten years. Probably not, but this isn't a do or die season for him. One hundred percent not a do or die season. Um, they're still working with Derek Carr. I'm just um, about to tell you about that. Speaking of that, uh, I don't <laughs> Derek. I, I don't. Even, I think John Gruden himself isn't even high on Derek Carr. I don't think so either. I I've heard in the off season that they were trying to find another quarterback. Yeah. Yeah, they're trying to work. Derek Carr was on the trading block in the offseason. Um, Josh Jacobs is a really underrated running back. Absolutely. He's underrated. Then I don't know who – you're talking to somebody who don't know football. <laughs> and uh, what's the dude's name? Henry Ruggs? Henry Ruggs? Henry Ruggs from Alabama, yeah. Yeah, dude's a monster. Give him some he's more time. Guy. Let him develop. And and you got Darren Waller. Dar- Darren Waller is – Top five. I don't think Derek Carr is ever going to be the answer for them. I hate to say that, but I've seen enough over the years now that I don't think he's the answer for them. Last season, they had a playoff push. Last season, they were close. Yeah, but. The, you need to get rid of. The, I agree with you. You need to get rid of Derek Carr. But Shoot, at the same man, time, go and sign Cam Newton, dude. No, you know I, would take, I would still take Derek Carr over Cam Newton. You think so? Absolutely. I think this is some of the best football we've seen. Out of Cam Newton, that in a quarterback position, like actually playing quarterback and not running for touchdowns. I don't think he's not good enough accurate passer. I, I don't think. <laughs> okay, I respect I think, that. I think he's washed real bad. But at least we can both agree that Derek Carr isn't the answer. Uh, no, we we I think it's been proven. I mean, all these years now, he's never has he ever made the playoffs. Has he made the playoffs before? Once or twice, maybe. 
I don't know. Let me let me fact check. But go ahead and say what you got. And, um, and then, uh, okay, so that's the Raiders. You know, Derek Carr and uh, John Gruden is the most famous person on that team. Don't get it twisted. He's he's who the fans are coming to see to a certain extent. Old Chucky over there. You know, weird. He's, he's that guy. I, I think his schemes are kind of out of date. I don't think he's up to date with the modern NFL. Uh, and now on the other side of the ball, the uh, Ra <laughs> Ravens. Hate, it's hard for me to say that. I hate the Ravens. <laughs> uh, they're always good. What can I say? They're our rival. Uh, Lamar Jackson, as much as I don't like him, I don't think he's a good NFL quarterback. I mean, uh, he's uh, a anomaly, I guess you could say, as far as that goes. Because, I mean, I don't know. They still win games with him. Even, but that that system they have, like a triple option with him, and it is a little hard to stop with Lamar running the ball. But they're always super well coached. I mean, they, they just signed Justin Houston to their defensive line. That's going to be super legit. Uh, they, they they signed Sammy Watkins. Not, not that that matters because Lamar don't throw the ball anyway. So, but uh, I just think that they're always they're a legit team. They're always going to be up there. Going to be in the playoffs. They'll be good. Uh, Baltimore is always consistent. Uh, I forget the coach's name. The Harborough, which I forget which one, but good 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 coach. Yeah. They'll have them ready to play. Yeah, they'll have them ready to play. They're always a good football team. Their defense is always solid. Yeah. And um, I got Baltimore uh definitely winning this game for sure. Yeah, I think uh, like as you said, uh Baltimore is an anomaly. Um if if you can't contain Lamar Jackson, you're going to have a problem. And it's and weird that I hate to cut you off, but it's a stat when he throws for more than 100 yards, they actually lose more games than when he throws for under 100 yards. Right. And that's what I was saying is is it you if you're unable to keep a, a good spy on him and keep him contained, you, you got a problem. And and I don't even think that spy is the answer for him. You gotta have you gotta have a scheme for, for Lamar Jackson because he is um he is that anomaly. But the problem is is um It doesn't work in the playoffs though, Nick. But not yeah, you're right about that, but it quarterbacks that do that don't last very long in this league because of injuries. I mean, look at Robert Griffin. I agree. Um, he's he's I mean, just Russell, pushed Russell, away Russell from Wilson, out of the league. Russell, Russell Wilson used to run like that, and then I think – He never ran like that, man. Lamar, yeah, nobody he ever – He never run like that, but he has been one of those, like, when it when he first got in the league, he was running, like, as a, yeah. as a running quarter – or, like, a running quarterback. Right. And, I don't you know, that somebody must have said something to him where they're like, hey, you're the quarterback. We don't want to see you get hurt, dude. Right. That's not that's not what you're here for. And I but, think uh, if Lamar keeps playing like that, I don't know how long he um I don't know how long he'll be in this league. That's why they're hesitant on giving him a big contract as well, though. Yeah. Um the uh the answer well, who you got? the answer to your question is um has Derek Carr ever played in the playoffs? Their only winning record in the past 18 seasons came from 2016 when they went 12 and 4 but lost in the wild card round with Carr out with a broken leg. Okay. So he, he so didn't get he made it to the playoffs but he didn't play. Man, that's tough. His whole career, that's tough. Is, yeah. Um I I think Baltimore is is if Vegas can contain him. If if Vegas can contain Lamar Jackson, they have a shot. They have a oh, shot. Of course, of course. And Vegas is uh, defense. If you can force him in the pocket. Horrible. You can beat him. Yeah, and I think the weapons that Derek Carr has gives them the ability to make this four and a half point spread questionable. Right. Um. If I'm betting on this game, I'm taking Las Vegas. Right. Well, agree. But if we're going straight up, I'm taking Baltimore. Fair. I think it'll be that close. That's fair. All right. And that's the Monday night football game. Um, let's that's the ahead. Monday night game? That's the game they put on Monday night for us? Yes, sir. That's terrible. Give me some rookie quarterback standout predictions. Um, I'll give you mine first. I already know um, everybody wants to talk about Mac Jones. And I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm not going to do that. I want to talk about how Andy Dalton is not going to finish this season and Justin Fields is going to get the start, and he's going to wow everybody across the league. 
I'm looking forward to seeing him play. He will play this season. He will start. Andy Dalton ain't the guy, and we talked about that. He's <laughs> not it. He's not it. And Justin Fields will have an amazing standout season. We all know Mac Jones is is the guy that everybody's talking about. I wanted to talk about somebody different. I, I agree with you. Mac Jones is going to be the guy. Rookie of the year? Um, I I think it's possible. I want to see. Give me give me about five weeks, and then we'll talk about this rookie of the year again. We talked about early rookie of the year guests, and I wanted to be a wild card, dude. I wanted I wanted to make a really hot take, bold prediction. And the reason why I even mentioned uh, Pitts to you was because I liked what I read about him. I saw some old footage um, from him playing in college. And I, I think for being a tight end as a rookie of the year is going to be tough. But I don't think it's super possible for that to happen. But I think he's going to be one of those guys with a really, really high ceiling that um, people are going to be talking about next year. I agree. Well, you know, I, uh, of course, Mac Jones is, I think he's in the best situation to do the best. That's why I think he'll be the best, but let's not, uh, <clears throat> let's say, uh, besides Mac Jones, cause you know, that's everybody's pick. Let's say, uh, how about, uh, Trevor Lawrence? I really am excited. To, I, I mean, this guy has only lost two or three, I think two, maybe three games since his sophomore year in high school, all the way through his college career, through his high school career. Uh, he's, he's supposed to be. He was supposed to be. The, we haven't seen a guy that was supposed to be the number one pick throughout this whole high school and college like this since I would say Andrew Luck. And so I really am curious to see how he handles the NFL. He's playing on Jacksonville. That's going to be tough. But the fans there will they'll ride for him. Jacksonville has a good fan base down there. Do so. I really think that uh, I'm curious to see what he does. I think he has a, the most arm ready talent in the NFL, and I. So I'm curious to see what he does, but I do think Trevor Lawrence coming out of that pro kind of style system at Clemson too will be able to adjust pretty quick as well. But uh, he's going to have to because with long hair like that, they're going to be coming to hit him because ain't no sunshine when she's on. <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah, like so I'm, I'm excited to see Trevor Lawrence play. I, I really am. I I am too. I want to see how um, how well he does in this Jacksonville uh, you no know, scheme. Um, I'm questioning like i talked about earlier the ability to sit there in the pocket and and throw like that and um you know maybe he makes an adjustment i don't know i'm looking forward to seeing how well he does though right right who's your rookie of the year guess early guess uh i'm gonna go with i'm gonna be a little biased this time i have been biased on it i'm gonna go Najee harris i think Najee Harris is gonna have a big breakout year uh pittsburgh is known for getting a lot of usage out of our younger players our rookies because we want to use them up on that on their first three-year contract i hate to say it like that but that's how we did Le'Veon. that's how because running backs i hate to say it but they uh they don't last long in the league man their first three or four years is their best years and i think Najee is going to be used a lot coming out of the backfield catching the ball like how Le'Veon did I think we're going to pound the run game a lot this year. That's why we drafted him so high. So uh, I think I'll have high hopes for Najee Harris to be Offensive Rookie of the Year this year. And maybe like it would be nice that. to see him give it to somebody besides a quarterback all the time. Right. I, I like that. You and I are on the same page. That's why I picked somebody that wasn't a quarterback. I mean, yeah. and I know it's a stretch to pick a tight end, but I'm excited to see how well he's going Well, to with Matt Ryan, you never know. That's very possible. Matt Ryan will throw the ball to him around the yard a little bit. Um. I know we've gone exceedingly further than what the anticipated time was going to be, but I do want to get um, just a little chatter out there uh, outside of uh, football and talk some crack. And I know I I'm hear, very excited for it. Very I, excited. I, I want to hear what your thoughts about how the draft went. I know you didn't really know anything about football. Well, first of all, whatever if you be like that again, I I watched every bit of the draft. The, the okay, NFL but you draft. told me you didn't. Uh, the NFL draft. I, oh, I, 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 I was talking game. about hockey. I know, but I, I, I missed okay. that one. I apologize. Okay. <laughs> Are you excited for it? You, does it does it get you motivated to start wanting to uh, get more interested in hockey? Uh, I, I try. You know, I, I enjoy watching hockey. It's it, it is fun to watch. It's not that bad, and I I will definitely be checking out some of the games this year. I'm super excited for that, and uh, I think going to a game and having a team to root for root for will definitely be 
help and be uh, watching it. But uh, I'm, I'm just super excited to go to the game. Uh, hockey is much fun to watch in person. And even though I'm not, you know, a hockey, uh, you know, historian or aficionado like you are, you know, I'm, I consider myself a sports mm-hmm. guy and uh, I know a little bit about hockey and I will always know a little bit about hockey because, you know, I am a Pittsburgh Penguins diehard as I guess. I don't know. I can't say all that. That's going a little far. <laughs> That's going a little far. But uh, I will also I'll be tuning in more to see the crack and play. Absolutely. How, uh, how do you feel being a Seattle from Seattle? How do you feel about that? I am, I'm ecstatic. I'm, I'm so stoked. Um, as soon as the team was announced, I was all, all on board. I'm, I was a blues fan. I'm still going to be a blues fan. I'm going to be rooting um, for the blues. I'm going to be rooting for the Kraken. So what, they um, play each other. They, they, I have it saved on my phone. <laughs> I don't remember the date, but they do play each other. And I will be taking the blues on that one. But outside of when they play, I'm all cracking. I like it. Um, I'm I, I like that the uh, draft went the way that it did outside of not taking Kerry Hart. Um, I know you don't really know, you know, the ins and outs. Oh, of, of that, course, Kerry Hart. Yeah, yeah, of course I know him. <laughs> and them not taking Kerry Hart was probably the thing that really kind of drove me up the wall. I was shocked. But um, I'm I'm really excited to see Giordano here, and I'm really excited to see uh, Big Rig uh, Alexiak. Um, it's going to be a fun season. I don't think they're going to do nearly as well as Vegas did on their first season. Why do you say that? Because I just don't have that high of an expectation. I think Vegas, um, that draft, uh, nobody was ready for it. And the second time around, People were ready for it, and the exposed players were. Um, How about not, uh, what about Mark Giordano? How about that's him? What I said. That's what I said, Mark yeah, Giordano. That's, my that's the one I was really happy. I when they drafted him, I I thought for sure they're on the right path here. Great, yeah, great name, good veteran president. Good president. hockey name right there, you know. He's gonna have the C. I, I, him or Alexi. Yanni. Like, well, How about C. Yanni? Don't forget about Yanni. Yanni isn't going to be playing for the first three months. He just had soldier, shoulder surgery. Oh, okay. See, I didn't know that. I, I had to do a little more research on yeah. that. It might be two months, but it's two or three months that he's going to yeah. be out. But I am very excited about Yanni Gord. Yeah. Very excited. Um, Jason Eberly is another one that I'm really stoked about, too. The guy put up points in the playoffs um, just last season and played really well. I'm I'm super stoked for this and and uh, go cracking, man. That's that's all I wanted to get out there. One more thing before you go. Um, this is in my in my notes here. Do you know who the Bishop Stickamore High School football team is? <laughs> yes. Uh, did you hear? I have it. On I, I have it here. here on my paperwork that you played for that team. You were I, part of that. You were. I thought you were on that team too. Well, you know they were gonna. I looked into it, but I couldn't find any info in, on it for some reason. I don't know. I was I was on the third string, man. I didn't oh. even get out on the field. How crazy is that? Is that not one of the funniest stories you've ever heard? I, I can't believe that ESPN would run that, let alone that they would form a team that quickly and absolutely, like, oh, man. They say when you looked up the thing that a picture of an apartment complex come up when you when you crazy. Google it. Yeah. And then it was to be all these like JUCO players and stuff, people, and they were getting blown out by high school kids. So I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't either. And and um, maybe that's a tribute to how I don't even know what the name of the team that they played. IMG was. Academy is really good. They're a well known football program. Okay. Well, and that's what I was saying. Maybe that's a tribute to how good that football team is versus some older Joku players. That's true. So I guess yeah, I just wanted to bring that to you. I didn't know if you were familiar with that powerhouse high school located out of uh, Ohio. I thought that was amazing. It was a wonderful story. <laughs> it's very, uh, it's, it's inspiring, almost you would say. Troll you know? to the max. I like it. Anybody can do it. Exactly. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, it has been awesome doing this again. I'm so excited to bring you guys this back every week. Um, and I'm hoping, you know, John, you, you stick around for a while, man. I had, I, a great time. I had a great time talking with you tonight. Um, and I'm looking forward to more, uh, NFL talk and hopefully other sports later. 
Absolutely. I, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm ready for the season to get rolling. There's nothing but going to be even better talk once the games are played. Each game, we'll break down each game for everybody, let you know how we feel about it, our hot takes, our cold takes, whatever we like. I'm sure we'll uh, overreact to a lot of stuff real fast, but, uh, hey, that's what we do. And uh, also be covering – I like a lot of boxing, MMA sports as well. well. I'm sorry, you know, camera trick there. That's actually on this side. <laughs> a lot of uh, sports of that nature. And uh, anything hot topic I want to cover, even a little bit of baseball, you know, things like Shohei Otani, you know, he's out there killing it. I like talking about him, stuff Dang. like that. But uh, definitely football is going to be our, my main thing, a topic. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I love NFL season. There's nothing better. You know, I'm from the South where football is like, uh, it's embedded into our culture down there. So, you know, football is very fun for me. And, uh, I'm hoping uh, as far as the Steelers go, I think we're on the stairway to seven. I know people laugh when I say that, but uh, it's going to be stairway to seven for number seven. So uh, that's how I'm going to end that right there. And we'll, we'll be talking to y'all after the uh, first week next week after we beat the shit out of the Bills. Thank you. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you guys next time.